good day once again everyone um, so it's good again to meet you all right so uh, today I just want to look at uh, the Doppler effect just an example on it I know that you've been working hard trying to prepare for those exams all right so um, we've already produced a video on it um, so this would serve just as a reminder and a revision uh, for those of you who have not really watched it Okay, so if you haven't subscribed, please make sure that you do the right thing. Okay, please make sure that you subscribe to our channel. And by the way, uh, don't forget to hit that thumbs up, you know, uh, just if you like the lessons. And by the way, for those of you who are still interested in finding out more about uh, our sessions on either maths or science who need help with tutoring, uh, you can just contact me at info at mlungisinkosi.co.za I'm just going to make sure that I provide that email address on the um, description of the video as well as um, uh, you'll see it on the screen right there right um, right let's get right into it um, so here I've got the 2016 uh, paper from Gauteng this is uh, this was a prelim by the way uh, just on the Doppler effect. Okay, let's get into it. It says a, a flying bat emits sound waves at a frequency of 75 hertz. Right now, there's a stationary observer that detects a frequency at the sound waves emitted at 73. Okay, now, first of all, you can already see that the emitted frequency and the one that's detected are different. Okay, and obviously, we're going to talk about that. Okay. And they say the speed of the sound in air is 340 meters per second. All right. Now, first of all, they say state the Doppler effect in words. Please remember, ladies and gents, you need to always be able to, you know, you know state those definitions and make sure you, you ace those ones. Right. So remember, what is the definition of uh, Doppler effect? I wish there was an easier way, you know, to kind of mention that. OK, it says it's the change in frequency or pitch. Uh, of the sound detected by a listener, right? Because the sound source and the listener have different velocities relative to the medium of sound propagation. Ah, it sounds like a mouthful. Okay, but um, please just make sure that you get those definitions right. Okay, those are free marks. Um, and so that you can obviously score and collect as many marks as possible. Right. Now let's get to the next question. They say, is the bat flying away uh, towards or away from the observer? Now note, in this particular case, we've got, um, you know, the frequency that's emitted by the bat as 75. So obviously that's our source. Okay. And the stationary observer, however, is detecting a frequency of 73. All right. So remember, we know that when the frequency of the um, uh, the observed frequency is less than the frequency of the uh, emitter, okay, the emitted frequency. So in this case, it simply tells us that this bet must be moving away. Remember, it's the source that is moving in this case, so it must be moving away from the observer. Okay, so obviously, if that frequency was higher than the emitted frequency, then it would mean that uh, um, it would be moving towards, right? Now, they give us the speed of sound uh, that is in air uh, to be 340 meters per second. Okay, so we've answered that question. We said it's moving uh, uh, away. Okay, so they say to you, calculate the speed at which the bat is flying okay i wish i could be able to draw it uh, but you know <laughs> my drawings are terrible okay so um what are we going to do we say well let's apply the doppler effect so uh, i i equation simply says okay the frequency of the listener that's v plus minus vl okay v plus minus vs over uh, multiplied by fs the frequency of the source right so now we know um, we are looking for the speed at which the bat is flying remember as a bat in this case is uh, the source okay so in this case we know that the observed frequency is actually 73 right 
so that's the frequency of the listener okay so however what I want to do is remember in our video where we did the Doppler effect, we said what you simply do, because I know my answer is less than the actual frequency that is emitted, what type of fraction should this be, right? If you remember, for those of you who watched it, if you haven't, please go and watch that video. So this must be a proper fraction. So when you multiply anything with a proper fraction, right? Uh, the result is actually less than uh, what you multiplied with, right? So in this case, um, I'm trying to make a proper fraction. So I'm going to have V. Now note, uh, the speed of the listener, that's what I want, right? So in this case, uh, I want you to please stay with me. So I know that um, the speed of the source, or, or rather the speed of sound in air, is that's my v there but what about my source that's the one that's uh, moving and my listener is stationary so in this case i know that it's going to be v plus zero okay so the speed of the listener is zero so in this case if i want to make it a a proper fraction it means in a proper fraction this bottom part here or the denominator must be greater than the numerator. So which sign am I going to have? Of course, it's going to be a positive there, right? So it means that uh, this would be a proper fraction. So in this case, we say plus Fs. So that's going to be uh, Fl there, right? So what about the frequency of the listener? The frequency of the listener in this case, that's going to be 73. Now I'm going to just substitute quickly there. Okay, that's going to be 340 divided by uh, 340 uh, plus. That's the speed of the source. That's what I'm looking for. But I know that this uh, the frequency of the source was given as 75. Okay, right. I'm sure you've got your calculators out there. Okay, so we're going to just do a little bit of mathematical gymnastics to try and determine that answer. Okay, so before we uh, calculate, let's just make sure that we simplify this mathematically. So what you actually have there is, uh, if we cross multiply, right? So I'm going to have 75. Remember, this is over one as well. So that's 340 times 75. Okay, I mean, uh, 340 times 75 multiplied by one. Okay, so here we're going to have 340 times 75, which is equals to 73 into 340 plus Vs. Okay, so we've cross multiplied over there. So in this case, uh, let's just make... Um, our calculation easier so I'm just going to divide by 73 over there so I will also do the same on that side so that cancels with that so here we are left with just 340 plus Vs so that's 340 plus Vs now let's try and work that out and find a simpler answer so that's 340 uh, multiplied by 75 over 73 so that's 340 divided by uh, 70. Okay, and I get an answer of 349 on the left hand side. But so remember, in this case, we need to subtract that 340. Okay, so obviously, we are going to get a velocity. So I get a final answer of Vs is 9.31 meters per second now please remember what i said to you on that video on the doppler effect i said you're going to be given two scenarios either a stationary source and a moving listener okay or you're going to have a stationary listener and a moving source so in this particular case we had a moving source a stationary listener so you must always look out for that and uh, by the way just remember if you always want to make this part uh, to be smaller uh, uh, in this case, so for uh, instances where um, the observer or the, you know, the, the you know, the, the, the listener, um, the observer rather, or the emitter is moving away, so we know that the frequency will be lower, right? 
so obviously we're going to always use um you know a proper fraction but obviously if it's moving towards we're going to always have an improper fraction for that okay right now this is our final answer when it comes to that now let's look at the um the last question there uh, obviously this these are theory based questions and um you know you have to master them you have to try and get as maximum uh, as as many marks as you possibly can now they say to you briefly explain the observation that enables scientists to tell that the universe is expanding okay uh, just to explain that uh, uh, in simple terms remember ladies and gents that what scientists do is that they observe the um, line emission spectrum of uh, you know distant stars right and they tend to observe that the line emission spectrum of those distant stars is slowly shifting towards the red end of the spectrum okay and what does that indicate to us that uh, it, it is actually moving towards the lower wavelengths and as a result it means that um, your your the, the stars are actually moving away and that's what gave the you know the the conclusion that the universe is actually exp expanding okay right and um yeah you can find ways to just express that okay uh, i'm a bit lazy to write all of that down okay so and the last one they say state two applications of the doppler effect in medicine okay uh, please remember that it's used to uh, detect you know uh, the flow of blood from the veins um through the veins and then also uh, they use it for for ultrasound you know to just detect the, the health of a baby okay uh, inside uh, a mother's womb right so those are the two um, most prominent uses of it and i think i want to leave it there i hope that this will be very helpful to you okay i'll see you guys next time i'll um, please just keep working hard uh, just make sure that you, you know, you, you try and do your best for these coming exams and please no anxiety. All you need to do, just watch my videos. Just make sure that you can practice a bit. No, not a bit actually. Yeah, practice quite a lot. And I promise you, um, you know, a combination of that will ensure that you can get those good results. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next time. All right. Sharp, sharp. Please don't forget to subscribe. Hey, ta-da.